What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are working on the Cadillac. The frame is all here. We had grabbed this from my parents' farm the other, uh, I guess last week, and we've been waiting for the hydraulics for it. Well, some of the hydraulics came in, so we're gonna get started on the rear hydraulic suspension on the Caddy frame today in this video. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first with the hydraulics here, we're gonna figure out how we're gonna put them in. And basically, if you watched the last video, we were talking about doing coil under the hydraulics for the rear. We're gonna do that for the front. And what that means is that the hydraulic cylinder here, there's two ways to hook it up, okay? So one way is to do a coil under setup. And what that means is that we would have a cup like this and the cylinder would go inside here so I'm just gonna show you on the table here. That is a coil under setup. The hydraulic would be on top of the coil and it would push down on the coil as it extends. The other idea is a coil over setup. And what that is, is quite the opposite. You use a different cup, it's this. And this slips over the hydraulic cylinder this way. And then the coil goes over the cylinder this way. That's a coil over setup. Now the coil would be much shorter than this, short enough so that the hydraulic cylinder would poke through. And the way that this works is that the weight of the car is gonna be sitting on this coil and as the hydraulic cylinder pushes down, it will be linked solid to the A-arm or the, uh, sorry, the, the trailing arm of the rear suspension. So I'm gonna try and explain that a little bit better. Um, and show you actually in the car. So that's what we're gonna do for the rear, is a coil over setup. Just to give you a backstory, before we actually dropped that last video, we had finished the video, we'd finished you know, working on the car and, uh, and wrapped up the video. That night, my brother's lowrider club, a couple of the guys came out. Rick is one of them, he's the president of the Acrophobiacs Custom Car Club locally, BC. So they're all custom guys. They do a lot of hydraulic setups. And so Andrew Ensing and uh, Rick Farmer, as well as my brother, they've all kind of had their input on this. And we kind of came up with the coil over is a better way to go. And you may have seen in the comments, or maybe you commented yourself, why aren't you doing coil over? That's like the best way to do these cars. Absolutely right. So the sweet thing about coil over is that now our cylinder doesn't stick up super high in the pocket of the spring. So instead of the coil, or sorry, the cylinder sticking up through here to about there, it's gonna only stick up a little bit, but it will move with the suspension up and down. This may not make sense if you're new to this kind of suspension, but I promise it will get simpler as you see it come together. This is sitting all the way down right now. This is our trailing arm. That is where our spring goes, right here. So essentially what we're gonna do is take this coil pocket off and we are going to mount the hydraulic cylinder to this with a heim joint. The heim joint is going to sit right inside there. These are the heim joints I bought. These have a lot of articulation, a lot of swivel, so that's a good thing for us. So let's look at this old chassis here. I'm going to remove this coil pocket or whatever you want to call this and this is going to be right in the center here. I'm gonna drill a hole in here, and this is just stamped steel. This is probably 10 gauge stamped steel. I'm gonna drill a hole right through that. There's gonna be a bolt. This is gonna thread into the inside of the hydraulic cylinder. So it will push on this. And with the coil over the hydraulic cylinder, the coil and the cylinder will go up and down inside the pocket. So in order for me to be able to confidently install this in here, I want to put a doubler plate. So I'm gonna weld a plate on the outside of this and the same on the other side so that it's a little bit thicker material, material where this bolts in. That's gonna make it strong. And then the top here, this was adding some strength because you can see 
these are open at the top. Like they're, they've got a little bit of flex. They're kind of flimsy. And I think that's, you know, a bit of a reason. You can go to a solid tube. Lots of guys run in custom tubes, but we're doing a lift and lay hydraulic setup in this, which means that it's just like, I'm not three wheeling the car. We are just lifting and lowering the car. We're not doing anything more than really what you would ask of it relatively stock. So I'm not too worried about the strength of these. Um, I am gonna beef them up a little bit, like I said, with the doubler plate here. And then I'm gonna add a plate to replace the strength of this coil pocket to weld to the top of this that will also have a hole in it to allow this to slip inside. This is gonna be a lot more clear once we get these off, but I just wanted to show you what I'm thinking before we get into that. So essentially what we're gonna do, these are the front coils that I've got here. This is the front coil. So it's basically gonna look like this. I'm gonna cut these coils down. These are th the actual original front coils. I'm gonna swap these front coils to the rear um, just to stiffen it up a little bit because we're gonna have batteries back there and hydraulic pumps, you know, stereo, that kind of thing. So it's okay to put the front coils to the rear and then just a slightly heavier coil for the front. But I'm just using this to demonstrate what it's gonna look like. So the Heim joint will thread into the bottom here. We'll sink it in pretty deep. This will be bolted through that trailing arm and it will, I don't think I'll actually get this to extend. It's probably pretty sticky. Nope. So this will extend out, putting weight on this coil and that will be our ride. I'm just gonna get started. So my first order of business is going to be removing these out of here and then figuring out what my doubler plate's gonna look like so that I can bolt through and strengthen the trailing arm here and then building a strengthening plate for the top. Um, what we're also gonna do is cut a lot of this out because there's a top coil pocket here and we're gonna strengthen this up with a piece of quarter inch plate with a hole in it for the cylinder. So we've got one plate to weld on here, we've got a plate to make for here and then we've got doubler plates for either side and we're gonna have to drill a bolt, but that's it. It's actually pretty simple. Because I've got the CNC here, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. <laughs> you, you could do this at home with uh, you know, a torch or a plasma cutter or a grinder. I promise you can do it. I've done it for years. I've got the CNC now, so I'm gonna draw these up on the CAD program and we're gonna go for it.
Okay, so we got these pieces peeled off of the um, trailing arm here. They were just spot welded in four places. I just drilled the spot welds out. They came right off. So that did add a little bit of strength to the arm, but having this on there, just because it kind of boxed in a small section. So that is what these plates are replacing is the strength of this. So now this will be tying both sides together. I'm going to spot weld this on similar to factory. I just went a little overkill. We got 10 of these in factory had four. So that'll close that up. Our cylinder, this oval is so that our cylinder can drop inside that pocket a little bit. I'm going to screw this thread quite a bit further in, but um, it's going to sit right inside there. We're going to drill a hole through the side of this arm so that we can put a bolt through. My original idea that you saw me cut out was these doubler plates. I was going to have one on each side of the arm welded to the inside or the outside and it was just going to double the wall thickness so that you know this bolt has more than an eighth of an inch to put force on because it's it's sheer force going on this really thin stamped metal this is just 10 gauge so i was going to double it up make it you know quarter inch or whatever but i'm changing my plans for that because this trailing arm actually is parallel here and then it starts to taper in. It starts to taper in right where that bolt is gonna go. So this would end up being on a bit of an angle or we'd have to put a bend in it. And that just doesn't work because then we're gonna have to have, you know, tapered washers and all kinds of junk. So my new plan and probably what I could have gone with from the beginning had I thought it through is just doing a piece of tubing on each side welded all the way around on each side of this trailing arm. And that is, essentially how this trailing arm is designed already. There is a piece of tube holding each bushing in to each end of the arm and uh, that's what spreads the load of the bolt. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I uh, machined up these little DOM pieces of tube. They are three quarter inch 120 wall DOM tubes and what's beautiful about DOM tubing, I've talked about it before, is that they undersize the wall of the tube so that you can, you know, smoothly fit a piece of hardware through it. Uh, when you order DOM tube, you always start with the outside diameter and then the wall thickness. So this is three quarter inch outside diameter with 120 thousandths of an inch wall thickness, which is five thou shy of an eighth of an inch. If it was exactly an eighth of an inch, then a half inch bolt would have a really hard time going through it because it would be perfectly sized to the thousands. So it's got a little bit of play, like not much, perfect for a bolt. That's what DOM tubing is great for. Also for bushings, like if we were gonna make this arm from scratch, you would be able to buy DOM tube that would have the perfect inside diameter to accept some urethane bushings that you buy from just a standard, you know, aftermarket urethane bushing. So um, that's what these are. They're just little chunks of DOM tube. This is going to weld into each side of this arm all the way around will be able to get a full circle weld on there. That's also going to center our heim joint in our pocket like that. And that'll be that for the lower, lower trailing arm. The upper is going to get this donut. I'm going to weld it onto the top of the coil pocket just to be a little bit stronger, clean it up, add our hole rather than uh, doing anything with the um, the original stuff. The coil was a larger diameter coil before, so we're gonna have to remove that coil pocket or whatever it is, like the piece that centers the large coil in there, it bolts on. So we're gonna take that off and we're gonna weld these on. It'll be stronger, it'll look cleaner, and it'll accept the hydraulic cylinder running through it. So essentially, let's just show you. Here's the cylinder, sits inside the pocket there. This cup goes on next. Then it is the coil spring. And then the coil spring, this will be part of the chassis, pushes up on there. So no matter what, when our hydraulic ram extends, the weight of the car is on here on our coil spring. That's how it's gonna lift and lower using the hydraulics with this setup. Okay, hopefully I explained it okay. My next step is I'm just gonna clean all this up and I'll weld these pieces on then it'll be strong and something that I can clamp into my milling machine. I'll turn it up like this, clamp it in the milling machine, and I'll drill that three quarter inch hole through both sides of the trailing arm so that we can weld these pieces in. 
That's coming up next.
Okay, so I just wanted to uh, show you guys how I'm gonna cut this hole for the donut. This is the upper spring pocket. The spring pushes up on the back side of this. So this is, I think, probably 10 gauge or a little better. But what I'm gonna do is weld this piece of quarter inch plate in there as a donut that the spring is now gonna push up on and our cylinder can come through the center. And that cylinder is gonna move with the rear axle. So it'll be sliding up and down in there. I may put a piece of Teflon or Delrin to uh, sleeve this hole a little bit. I mean, people don't really normally do that. I don't know if it really needs it or not, but maybe. But uh, anyway, this right here is just a piece of flat bar. I just drilled the measurement of the radius that I want for this hole. I'm gonna push this up from underneath and weld the lap. So I'm leaving a little bit extra on here. That's the plan anyway. So um, this is gonna just be a circle cutter for the torch. That's like another reason why I love the torch is like, you can do so many things with it. You can heat with it, you can cut with it, you can weld with it, you can do circles with it, you can do whatever. So if there's one tool you're gonna buy, like get handy with a torch, you know? I always, I'm, I sometimes meet people that don't have torches and they do, you know, full custom hot rods and stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? How do you not have a torch? Anyway, let's get this going. The key with this is that you want your hole to hold the tip up so you don't have to hold the depth. You know, you want to pick the right size hole here so this tapered tip sits in there and leaves a little bit of room before it hits the material so I don't have to hold the torch up. So I can just concentrate on being smooth with the torch. That's the idea, having this nice and tight and smooth. Um, I put a couple of washers in there just to uh, help it out. Let's give her a go. This material isn't very thick, so you don't need like a super hot torch. Could probably pierce right in right here. Kind of rusty in there, so it kind of made a little bit of a bad cut, but the rest of it turned out really good. So it's a good thing we're kind of reinforcing it. It's a little bit weak there, but uh, I'm gonna clean that up, put our donut on the back side like this. Once it's all clean, then weld all the way around it.
All right, we got the rear juiced up. Check that out. This is teed up as high as it can go. I just have, I just have air in here that's not even close to enough pressure to hold this thing up. All the air is doing is allowing the cylinder to extend while the jack is actually holding it up. But I just wanted to show you guys how it looks and how it works because it's a lot easier to tell what's going on when it looks like this. So the pocket is pressure down on the spring. The cup is attached to the bottom of the cylinder housing here. And so this is what's compressing and this is just solid. So it's just adjusting how far away the spring cup is from the trailing arm. That is the lift right here, but it's always riding on the spring. Yeah, that, that's how you do a coil over hydraulic setup on something like this. So a lot of them are like that. A lot of them use what's called a power ball, which is just a super heavy duty ball joint in the bottom. The Heim joint is fine for just a simple lift and lay. We're not doing anything crazy, so it works awesome. Has plenty of movement, tons of articulation if we need it. You can see that that Heim joint is actually a special one. It's got a lot of extra movement on it in case, you know, say you were bombing down a crazy road and you had some gnarly body roll, it's got enough movement that it'll never bind having that kind of stresses, you know, going on it. Yeah, there it is. I'm super happy with it. I'm gonna use those springs in the front, but I just have them in there for now. This all worked out really well. I just welded that in, that's quarter inch plate. So that's what the spring is actually riding on. I guess what I'll do now is I'll just unplug these and we'll see it down. So let me lower this thing, the jack here. Oops, <laughs> those all just fell out. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, we're back. I just had to put, put these cylinders back in the holes uh, just cause there's no weight on it. But yeah, so these, Cylinders, you'll see if I can jump on the frame a bit. They actually, they move with the axle. That's how they work. Yeah, there's a little bit of space above the rear end. So it's not all the way down because we do want enough spring so that the spring is compressed with the body weight on it. That's something we'll play around with a little bit. But the setup's done, like that's it. It's all collapsed. You can see how that pocket, that spring perch, it even has clearance you know, just enough clearance. So it's not touching or binding on the trailing arm. It's got, you know, quarter inch in there. Okay, well that is it for doing hydraulics on the rear of Christina's 1960 Cadillac. Uh, we did the coilover setup, stoked, it's all done. Next up is gonna be the front. The front's gonna need a bunch of work. That'll be the next video. We're gonna try and get a little bit more low out of it. There's a few things that we're gonna have to do to get that and, uh, and we'll go over it next time. But basically we're gonna start cutting pieces of the frame away that we don't need, figuring out where the cylinders are gonna go and reinforcing the lower A-arm to accept the coil for the coil under setup for the front. Thanks a lot for watching Make It Custom. Don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers everybody, have a good one.